This is the Acropolis of Tirinth in Greece. You may not have heard of it. It's eight kilometers from Latvia. It's about 18 kilometers from Mykines, and it's about 12 kilometers from Argos. And it is an example of monumental structure. But it's also famous for another reason. In Greek myth and legend, if you believe that, and I do, Hercules lived here. King Eurythrius, who was supposedly king here, was the king who set Hercules his 12 labors. And what we're looking at here is history which is three and a half thousand years old. This site itself, this Acropolis, has been occupied apparently for up to 7,000 years. But in its current state, what we see is the Acropolis from about 1,200 BC. So let's say you were from Argos and you were a bit annoyed with the king of Tirinth at the time and you wanted to attack this place. The main entrance is here. This is where you would have come in. So let's go in and just imagine what it would have been like. So as soldiers, you would have been funneled into perhaps two, two abreast, which isn't a great way to start an invasion of a city anyway. And you would have come through this narrow entrance and been faced with these steep steps and these imposing walls, height up to about 18 metres. People up there throwing rocks at you, throwing arrows at you, throwing spears at you. And then you have to do this right angle, which slows you all down as you try and run up here um, with your shields above your head, trying to survive the next 20 metres. And you come up here and you're already exhausted because, oh my God, it just seems to keep going. Is there no end to this? And the walls just keep rising above you. And the people who are defending the citadel here just keep throwing things at you. Rocks, spears, probably animal carcasses, your dead mates, everything. You can just imagine how terrifying and difficult it would have been to invade this place, which was the whole point, of course. I mean, I'm just walking up here and I'm knackered. And I'm only like halfway up. It would have been amazing. And just to help me visualize things today, there is a beautiful boat in the harbor of Nafplio. This is known as Cyclopean architecture in that the blocks of stone are so large, some of them are 18 meters by six meters and weigh over 50 tons, that it was thought impossible for humans to construct this. So myth and legend has it that the Cyclopses were enrolled into constructing this amazing Parthenon. And Tirinth was part of the Mycenaean culture, which existed from about two, two and a half thousand BC to about 1100 BC. Um, and that's really in Greece known as the prehistory. That is the time of myth and legend. That is when Hercules lived here. Here we would have come up to the palace, the location where the royal family or the warlord, if you like, perhaps, but they would have referred to it as king in those days, lived. He had a huge throne room here. You can see the basis of the pillars here, which used to exist. And it would have been a magnificent sight to anyone visiting this area. It would have dominated the landscape. And for anyone who perhaps didn't live here, it would have inspired shock and awe. It's hardly surprising that this is a land of myth and legend and the land which spawned effectively European culture and history three and a half thousand years ago, one and a half thousand years before the birth of Christ. We shouldn't underestimate what a feat it was to build this place. The walls are six meters thick. Some of the blocks weigh upwards of 50 tons. They're 18 meters by six meters, the largest blocks. And it's no wonder that this is called Cyclopedian architecture. The ancient Greeks believed that this place had been built by the Cyclops, called here by the first King Protus, who built Tirinth in myth and legend. Um, he was the great grandson of Nafplio. Nafplio is the city over here. And Nafplio himself was the son of Poseidon and the father of Theseus, who killed the Minotaur in the Minoan civilization of Crete. And Protus brought the Cyclops here to build these walls and make them impregnable. This was a fortress. Every Acropolis is a fortress. If people say, what is an Acropolis? Effectively, an Acropolis is a fortress. It's translation in ancient Greek, as I understand it, means something like high city. But you can imagine there would have been this enormous fortress 
of the style, in a sense, scale certainly, of medieval fortresses of the United Kingdom, with a town ranged out below it of 10 to 15,000 people. And at times of trouble or strife, they would have come up into here for protection. So if we look over here and we see the sea, it's approximately 1800 meters or 1.8 kilometers away. In ancient times, at the time of Tirinth, 1200 BC, I'm told that the sea was much closer, perhaps only 800 meters away. So Tirinth here, despite appearances, and here we have the royal palace, would have been a port city. And it, the theory is it was the port city for the Mycenaean civilization. Here we can see Argos with Larissa Castle on the hill. Now the destruction of Tirinth actually came in about 650 BC when they allied with the city-state Sparta, which was a pretty daft move actually because right between Sparta and Tirinth lies Argos. And Argos at the time was one of the rising powers in the area. The Mycenaean civilization by that time had collapsed and the king of Argos took offence, shall we say, to um, Tirinth allying with his enemy, the Spartans. So he sent an army here um, from Argos, which is only about 12 kilometres away over there, and basically destroyed the city. That was the end of Tirinth as we know it. But the golden period of Tirinth was about 1200 BC to about 1150 BC. And at that time, it's reckoned there were between 10 and 15,000 people living here. Um, ruled over by various kings. I mean, we talk about these kings of city-states, but really they were warlords. Now, I talk, keep talking about the Mycenaeans. Who were the Mycenaeans? Well, there were several city-states in Greece which were dominant um, in the prehistoric period. And these city-states were Sparta, were Athens, were Mykines. And Mykines, we haven't visited yet, but Mykines is basically an acropolis and city over here and about 20 kilometers away and we'll go and have a look at it in another video. Tirinth was the second city of the Mycenae, Mycenaeans and it was very much their fortress city. It's much more of a fortress than Mykines itself probably because of its location to the sea and the port here. So you can imagine the sea was a kilometer closer, much much closer, maybe 800 meters away and this would have been a bustling port city. Um, with the Acropolis here in the middle as a fortress to protect the people from attack, to protect the royal family here or the warlord who ruled at that time. Um, and you can understand why myth and legend grew up about this place. We are standing here at the birth of European and human civilization, looking at something which at the time, in comparison, in the UK, they might have been building hill forts out of wooden stakes and roundhouses. And yet the Greeks, 1200 years, 13, 14, 1500 years before even the Romans came, were building this monumental architecture to protect themselves from anything and everyone who was going to come and try and take it from them. Some of you may be wondering why Greek mythology started here. Why were there so many monumental buildings in this area? Well, it's because of the Argolithic plain that we see stretching out before us. Not only do you have fantastic calm water, shallow water, perfect for boats and harbours at the time, and it would have been a lot closer to us, but you also have this incredibly fertile plain, which over millennia the sea has retreated from, leaving incredibly fertile land for fruits, for olive groves. You have oranges here, you have lemons here. They started growing kiwi. It's great land for goats and sheep. It's just Eden for medieval people. I hope you've enjoyed our little tour of Tirinth and a look at the landscape and history of a country that really embodies European culture, the start of European culture, and remains in large part unchanged for three and a half thousand years since this city here was at its zenith.